Hi there. Welcome to Bonzolium video number 298. I think it's in that neck of the woods. I'm not 100% sure though. Um, I don't know. But this is the Misty Mountain Hop Parallax. Okay? Look up Parallax. Right now, open up another window or another browser thingy or whatever the hell we do on our little handheld computers that are more powerful than the, all the Apollo programs put together. Type in Parallax. I think it's P-A-R-A-L-L-A-X. In fact, I know it is because I double-checked it before I came down here. The Parallax. Okay, Parallax, look at the metaphor sort of meaning. Okay, now here's the deal. We all know, and I'll make this rock and roll thing real brief, okay? In rock and roll, the intro to rock and roll, it's often thrown m many, most people off by all of us assuming that the first note of Bonham's playing is uh, the one count. One, two, three, four, da 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 right? Okay, well, go back and look at my rock and roll videos if you want to check that out. Misty Mountain Hop. Now, up until a very late time in my life, we all know how in Zeppelin tunes, and all bands do this, but since we're all about Zeppelin, we know how Zeppelin did this. Like in um, uh, Out on the Tiles. Although I might have messed up that little arrangement thing. But the point is, is what happens is sometimes they add an extra little beat or they cut like an eighth note out. You know, bands will do that sometimes. Oftentimes, consistently. Like Yes and Rush and Genesis and some of these bands, which they don't think of it as cutting it out consistently. They just thinking about think about playing it in like thirteen sixteenths or nine eight or five four or twenty one seventy fifths. But here's the deal, Misty Mountain Hop. I always, as I know a lot of us have, heard the intro. Um, what is it? Defender Roads, I think. The intro of. John Paul Jones's very first note, chords or note that he plays at the very beginning as a one count. Now this is important. It's important anyway because I think it is. But we all know in the song, right, it's sort of a standard like one, two, three, four, ba, ta, ta, na, ah, ta, ta, na, ah, ta, ta, na, ah, right? Okay, that's a jump in before the lead, right? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, and and four, and one and two right? It's the and coming into the one officially. But back in my day when I got my hands on my brother's physical graffiti record, it's not on physical graffiti, what the hell is the matter with me? On a Zeppelin IV record, forgive me. All right, you know, I mean, what happens sometimes when you get ancient? And, you know, I'm actually I'm wearing these cheaters now, man. I mean, look at this. I'm 46 years old. I'm halfway to 92. So, what happens is, in those days when I would pop on Misty Mountain Hop, I would always assume just by how it worked. Sometimes I grab the symbol because sometimes it just it resonates as I'm talking. It drives me crazy. So what happens is often we'll assume the first note we hear on a record or coming out of a song or out of silence into songdom is the one count. One, two, because you always imagine the folks in the recording. One, two, one, two, three, four, ba, ba, right? Okay. So that's how I always heard the intro of Misty Mountain Hot from Zeppelin IV or the Cymbals album. I didn't hear it as one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, as, which should be crystal clear, because when we hear it in the song, it's ah, 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 right? Ah, right? So, and one, except that probably, in no, when I first heard the song, I never heard the song. I just heard the intro. But when you do in the in the focus, in the lens, in the foci, in the filter of, in the parallaxishness of hearing that first note as the one makes the intro sound pretty damn cool. Okay? So instead of one, two, three, four, right? I never heard it that way. I always heard it as this. If you hear that first note as the one, 
it makes the drums sound like they come in a little bit later, as if they're adding like an eighth note to the whole thing. As like in rock and roll, it sounds like they're adding three. If you think the first note of, of one, two, three, if you think that's the one, holy snare buzz. Well, that's why you seem to get thrown off at the end, because there seems to be three extra notes, three extra eighth notes at the end, but there's not, because the three extra notes are at the beginning, we don't perceive that they are because we thought it started on the one, but it actually starts on the end, three. Same with Misty Mountain Hop. But I'm just, now I'm wondering here, if, if maybe people who've never heard it that way, the only way they could ever truly hear it that way, because they've, you know, they had a good sense of whatever, like they never were suckered into it like I, and I know some others were. In fact, I had a dear friend who since passed away, who he and I had a, well, he, let me rephrase that. He had, he and his buds, had a Zeppelin tribute band. They were very successful in the 90s. They were one of the first more or less Zeppelin tribute bands, well, at least in the Midwest. I'm sure they were going up, but like eight, late 80s maybe. Um, he and I, had a re well, we rehearsed like three times. We had two gigs, we rehearsed like three times, if that. But I, you know, he and I agreed that he always thought Misty Mountain Hop started this way too. But my point is, for people who don't know, I'm, I'm hoping there's a lot of folks out there right now who know what the hell I'm talking about. But if you're not, what if you can, if anybody is sort of a wizard with audacity, and you got to be careful here of ever bringing any Led Zeppelin music into your videos, or a lot of other vid uh, music that's copyrighted. When I uploaded that uh, video that I got from Bill Townsend, uh, purportedly of John Bonham's original Amber Vista like drums, okay? He had Led Zeppelin playing in the background as he talked. He, so when he talked, his voice was a lot like, um, and I don't mean this as a put down, I mean for the late Bill Townsend, God love him. But he saw, you know, we'll leave the light on for you. You ever heard that commercial? <laughs> Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. That's how he talked, you know, God love him. But as he was talking, a whole lot of love was blasting through stereo system and uh, what other tune? Cashmere maybe. But when I uploaded that video, me for, I wasn't even going to publish it honestly. With with with, I wanted it to be quiet because I thought it was just. I just thought it would be cool if you just heard it without anything. But even as I uploaded it before I even, right when it was uploaded, it was like sound is blocked because of Warner Chapel or whatever. Like it's like that, you know. But if somebody. As it relates to Misty Mountain Hop, obviously the best example I could do, and in a lot of these tunes, would for me literally to play it for you right now, but I can't, because you'd never see the video. I'd get in trouble, okay? It's just the way it works. But, so, instead of one, two, three, and it's very noticeable when you see, like, the like the live thing that they added to the song remains the same when they do it, like, in the encore at the end that they added, I don't know, ten years ago. But in the studio version, if you're just not really thinking, it sounds like that note's the one. So then it will sound like this, okay? So instead of the cadence being da 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 it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Ba 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 one da 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 one. It almost sounds it sounds complete, even though the note structure on paper is the exact same as written. You're sliding essentially the same notes as like just the whole thing like over an eighth note. And when you hear it that way, when those drums come in, it sounds so freaking cool. Well, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's it's so instead of one, two, three, four, uh, bah, bah, da, uh, this is the normal way. Uh, bah, uh, uh. See, now I got it stuck in my head. Uh, 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 uh. It's like, ultimately, it's what I call, what I call, the term is, it isn't really proper, but the turnaround. You know, like in all the up and stuff we hear. Well, that's what it is. Okay. But what happens is, when we do have fallen to the parallax and to the not correct thing where we think that first note ba ba that ba is a one in the one position in the bar of music if you imagine it that way it sounds funky it's like one two three four ba 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 it sounds like 
it comes in on the like wrong except if you've never heard it before it sounds right it sounds big fat zeppelin-y beefcake like Ugh! do you know what i mean like in the in the zeppelin way where bottom used to play really behind the beat like that fill or like that um in since i've been loving you ba -ba -ba right before that ba -da 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 -ba 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 -ba. It's not like late and dragged that bass drum note is. It's just like majestic. Uh, right? Well, in this Misty Mountain Hop Parallax, it's more so than that. Because obviously a whole beat is added, again, relative parallaxy to the whole shenanigans. Okay? So I, I was going to say, if somebody could, if you figured out a way to use Audacity or something that I started to say, just get something where you have a, a click or a, a, or a chirp. One, two, three, four. And write on what the next one would be. Start the very first music of Misty Mountain Hop. You'll hear what I'm talking about. And that fill comes in. It just sounds so... It's a classic example of like in John ba in Zeppelinburg where they would play to Bonham. Like if, be, if he'd be a little behind, they'd wait for him. Like it was totally like... You know, like when like kings and, and, and people, like the late, like you arrive late to build the suspense, you know, finally, like just when you're like, yeah, they're not coming, then they come in like, ah, you know, it's kind of like that. Um, but so check that out if you can. Again, it's the coined by me, Terry Keating, the Misty Mountain Hop Parallax. I think that would be a good band name. Misty Mountain Hop Parallax. Huh. Um, but again, so... I think that's really cool. So if you get a chance to check that out, if you can comment, if you've ever heard the song this way, because I know I mentioned this in another video or two briefly, and a couple people commented like, dude, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But it can be, in just the same sense, it dawned on me properly <laughs> when I was later on listening to how Misty, Hop, Misty Mountain Hop was actually going, ah, da, 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 ah, da, da. Uh, 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 uh. Which it didn't dawn on me for several years that maybe the intro was simply just that. Maybe you can unlearn the proper way and go back and hear sort of this distorted, sort of bizarre, sort of like altered states in the frickin' water tank kind of thing. Because it's really, really cool. So, and also, too, I'll just take this opportunity, too. You know, the, the concept of the parallax, the Misty Mountain Hop parallax, again, now coined by me. Uh, applies to all kinds of other tunes by other bands, right? Right off the top of my head, you can think, well, it's not off the top of my head now because I've thought about it before, but the Eagles, take it easy, okay? If you think of that first note again as the one, in fact, it's the exact same timing of Misty Mountain Hop, the exact same. That first note that Glenn Fry, I guess, plays, or well, Doug Felder probably wasn't in the band yet, plays on that guitar, clang, clang, is on the and of four. It's not on the one. But you can fall into the same sort of, you know, parallax sort of thing if you, it, it, it sounds like, you know, what, how come they're, you know, Henley's bringing in those drums in eighth note late? Okay? It's the same thing. Okay? So, um, and then also, too, like, I mean, there's tons of examples. Uh, well, rock and roll, obviously, is one, but since it starts with the drums. See, rock and roll is different because it starts with the drums, a non-melodic instrument. It's more interesting and sort of totally more mind screwy because with Misty Mountain Hop and I say take it the Eagles tune I was just talking about, it starts with the melodic instrument. When it starts with the melodic instrument, that's when you get more of the cerebral sort of like because it's musical notes, it really sounds like almost a different song until the song kicks in. And I think the Misty Mountain Hop moniker concept can be applied to, and I know this has happened to everybody, especially back in the day before we had satellite radio and things. You know when you get in the car, sometimes in the old days, maybe now you still do, but you'd be in the car, right? You'd drive around, you'd be busy, pull up somewhere, their stereo would be blasting, but you just turn the car off and get the hell out of the car. A lot of people do that anyway. I always make it a point to turn the stereo and all accessories off, then turn the car off and get out. But what a lot of people do is it's just like air conditioning's on, everything, they just pull up where they are, put it in park, turn everything off, go into the joint, and then come back out and turn it back on. But when you come out and the stereo sort of comes on and there's a song already playing, there are times, especially if you're not really listening to it, like if the device in your head that immediately nails, 
Like that thing online, if you want to know what the song is, you take your smartphone, you hold it up, and it tells you immediately like what the song is because it recognizes the melody of the... Before your brain's heard as a chance to do that when you're thinking about other stuff, sometimes you'll hear a song you know, but you don't recognize it because you've caught a, a part of the melody in your brain as the one. Now, this has happened to everybody, whether you want to admit it or not. And you're like, well, this is kind of a cool, but by kind of a cool thing, but by the very nature of it, because the drums are playing, if you catch a different note as the one, if it's not like the and or the, it'll sound like the snare drum and bass drum are sort of in a different place and sort of like a, a very kind of cool place, okay? So instead of like, ba, da, 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 it's like this, ah, na, ah, 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 ah. And it's, it is kind of like, God, what is that song? That kind of sounds cool. And you sort of get sort of caught in sort of the, um, the spell of it a little. Like you don't know. And then finally what will happen is a part of your brain sort of wakes up and you're like, oh, it's just this song. And then immediately you kind of can't bring your mind back to kind of hear how you were sort of relatively hearing it. I know that's happened to you. You're lying if it isn't. I know it has. And it, and it, Here's another way of thinking about it, and this is an actual parallax thing, proper, I suppose. Ugh. In my living room upstairs, we have like a stucco weed kind of ceiling. Not like the harsh stucco of the 20s that's sort of like blotchy, sort of looking, but sort of smooth and sort of, you know, like, like on a cake. You know, on a cake, sort of like the smooth waves and stuff. And if I'm laying on the sofa and I look up at it, and if there's a source of light coming from one area, it casts relative shadows on these things. Like you're looking at the surface of the moon or something, if the sun is over, does that make any sense? So it's the shadows go, anyway. But what happens is, is if you sort of space out for a minute and you kind of forget, if you're not really sure, if you, a part of your brain just shuts off where the source of light's coming from, it can make the shadows, sorry, it can make the shadows, it switches the relativity of everything. And it makes it look what is raised relative to the flat surface as depressed. Does anyone know what the hell I'm talking about? Okay, that is an, a de facto parallax. If I'm not well, maybe not a parallax proper, a proper parallax in the alliteration belt. Anyway, so all right, and today we're, today is Monday. More videos on the way. In fact, you know what I did? I just plunked out a bunch of cash for one of those Phil collins -y air traffic controller. Actually, I think it comes on the left side. One of these guys. Like, yeah, we're coming in on runway 32, right? Ceiling is We're coming in. Oh, we gotta go to the... But I will have one of those, okay? So I, it's the best way to do it. I have my board. Okay, I'll, I'll pump it into the camera. We'll be good, so you'll totally be able to hear me. I'm going to make, therefore, then... I want to make... Well, anyway... Videos will be cool. That's coming up very soon. Family just went back to school. Christmas break is over. Everything's sort of getting back on schedule. Those videos are coming. Quick throwback Monday. <laughs> Monday. So here's a picture of me from 1989. Okay? I just found this. My sister just sent it to me. So I, I think in the picture, which is now 27 years ago, I'm like this. I'm making a face like this. Like, hang on. I think I'm about this angle. 